So when it comes to the AEPS, there are several ways that we can summarize and begin to interpret the scores. A primary way that we often uh, interpret the AEPS is through numerical scores. And the first one um, is kind of unique in the sense that it's designed for the interpretation of if a child's development is on track or off of track. We can talk about that the development is delayed or the development is um, within the expected range, but it sort of just depends on what you want to answer. If you're trying to monitor a child who's at risk or if you're trying to contribute to a team decision around eligibility for early childhood special education services. There are two scores that you are routinely prompted for on the child observation data recording form, and that's an area percent score and a total percent score. Um, well, the area percent score is the one you're really prompted for, but there's another mm -hmm. one, version of it called a total percent score. And then there's one that I'm going to introduce that's um, probably got the most meaning from an instructional perspective, and that's percent mastered or percent emerging. So we're going to talk through some basics and then talk through each of these. So basically, we first have to make sure that we're scoring with fidelity, that we have um, agreement among team members of when to assign a two, when to assign a one or a zero. So again, just to revisit that a two is when we know a child has the, the skill, demonstrates it consistently, does it independently as defined for them, and can do it across <coughs> excuse me, time, people, and materials. A one starts to get a little bit confusing, especially without the use of scoring notes. But for now, let's just kind of lump all of this together and say that a score of one means that the child's skill is emerging. That could be emerging because they are inconsistent, that they still need some form of assistance, that they only do part of the criteria, or they only demonstrate the skill under specific circumstances, conditions, or even with certain people. So we're going to lump a one to mean it's emerging, but it could be emerging for a lot of different reasons which we'll unpack when we start using scoring notes. And the last one is that the child does not yet do it or was not observed. This is the hardest one to interpret because without notes or without comment or without even knowing the child's um, background and age, it's hard to know if the zero is a problem or not. But we really don't want to attend too much to zeros because they're oftentimes not what the child's ready to learn next. So before we get going into interpreting the scores, we need to make sure that the other part of fidelity, knowing how to score a developmental goal versus scoring an additive goal has been done correctly. So even if we're using two, one, and zero correctly, we have to remember that in a developmental goal, when there is no note about scoring in the goal criterion, every item, whether it be the goal or the objective, is scored independent of how the child did on the other skills in that hierarchy. So even if a child is <coughs> able to do um, goal one, it doesn't mean that they can, <clears throat> excuse me, necessarily do objective 1.3. However, in this example, it would be unlikely that a child could do goal one, which is walks avoiding obstacles, without having earlier in development walked with two hand support. So it depends on the developmental goal whether or not you'll see those splinter skills. But again, each item, the goal is an item and the objectives are items. Each is scored independent of how the child performed on the other skills. But when it's an additive goal, when there is a note about scoring in the criterion for the goal, we need to understand that in order to decide what the goal score is, um, we have to look at how the child performed on the objectives. And the scoring note, here with the red um, arrow pointing towards it reminds us of how to score the goal when it's additive. And this will be important when we go to sum up the area raw score because you want to treat each item, whether regardless if the goal is an, an uh, additive or a developmental, you treat each item in part of your addition or your formula. So at the end of each child observation data recording form, there's a results section. What gets confusing is one of the first numerical scores we can generate, which is an area goal cutoff score, there's not a place to put it on the form. So it becomes a disconnect because we get to the end of the area and we go to calculate it and we're not prompted. We're only prompted to get an area raw score an area um, and an area percent score. An area raw score is used 
in a mathematical way in order to determine the area percent score, but raw scores by themselves have little to no meaning. So we need it from a mathematical perspective, but we don't ever report it or share it. The cutoff scores are in a different area. Once you've calculated the area goal score cutoff number, the kid's area goal score, um, you then compare it to the child's, um, to the chart in appendix F as in Frank. So remember, we have to use the level that matches the child's chronological age if we're going to use this chart. We find the child's chronological age interval. We find the area, let's say fine motor, and we compare the child's area goal score with the cutoff. If the child's area goal score is above the cutoff, we consider or interpret that score to be within what is expected at that age. If it's at or below, we then um, express that there is a delay in that area. So that brings us back to the types of numerical scores that we can calculate. Again, an area goal score is by summing all of the goals only for the level that matches the child's chronological age, and then again, comparing it to the cutoff scores found in Appendix F. The area percent score is calculated by adding all the scores together. Now, zero doesn't have a value, so we say we just add the twos and ones, and you get an area raw score. So for every item in an area, each item in the area, I sum all the twos and ones, I divide it by the score possible and multiply it by 100 in order to get a percent. So if you look at the results section at the end of any um, child observation data recording form area, you'll see you are prompted to indicate the area raw score, and that would be by summing the child's performance on every single um, number that is in an S column. It doesn't matter if it's an additive or developmental, it's every item. And remember, items are a generic term for goals and for objectives. So we take that number, let's pretend we get to 98. We divide it by the total score possible, that's 98. That means that the child got a two on every single item in this area, they would get 98, giving the child 100%. We only convert it to a percentage just to have a little bit more meaning uh, because people understand that a percent is anywhere from zero to 100. However, it's kind of confusing still because we don't know how to interpret and we'll get more into that um, over time. There's also a total percent score, um, which I'll just touch on briefly. This is often used for kids who have more significant disabilities, who are making small changes in their uh, performance over time, but for which we want to, in some way, numerically show uh, either that they are maintaining a degree of performance or improving overall. And this is where we would not stop and get an area raw score, but rather we would count all of the scores for every item for all six areas get a total raw score divided by the total number possible and multiply by 100. One of the things that might be helpful is another chart, um, somewhere in here, uh, that I have but is not showing up in my PowerPoint. So let me just grab the screenshot of it really quickly for you. Um, this other chart is um, in chapter three of volume one, and it tells you the number of items, and it tells you the area raw scores possible. The area raw scores possible is always indicated on um, the CODRF. However, when we're gonna calculate this last type of score, um, it might just help mathematically to have this chart that's in chapter three. However, it's always half of the number possible in the area raw score. So what does that mean? So if we're back in our um, uh, PowerPoint here and we're looking at the uh, percent mastered or percent emerging, now we don't really care about values. We don't care that two is two times the quantity of one. We just wanna know how many items got a two. So if I look across the fine motor area and six items got a two, then my number is six. I want to divide it by the total number of items possible for fine motor and then multiply by that 100 just to get the percent mastered. So let's try that again. So if I give the child uh, the fine motor area and we go back to this little chart here and let's say it's level two, there are 15 items in the um, level two of 
the fine motor area. And if the child got a two on five of the items, we would take five and divide it by 15. And that would help us generate the number or the percentage of items that were mastered. The same goes for the number or of items or the percentage of items that are emerging. Remember we said earlier that we're using emerging as this generic term for anything scored a one. So we add any item for that area, all goals, all objectives, um, that got a one, we take the number, not the value, not the sum, so we don't go one plus one plus one plus one, we just go, oh, there are seven items that there's a one on it. So the child got seven items that had a one, we divide that by the total number of items, not the total score possible, but the total number of items multiplied by 100, and that gives us a percent. We'll talk about what that means, uh, on our journey as we continue learning about the APS, but for now we just need to make sure that we understand that there are um, some different scores that can be generated. The area goal score, the area percent score, the total percent score, and then we can start to make up some other numbers that might have some value in helping us interpret where to begin instruction and where um, the child is making progress given our instruction.